Hey guys and welcome to my Beastmaster Durzak, aka Raids 1 Guide. If you've ever wanted to do raids but you thought it was too difficult or you don't know what to do, this is the guide for you. So when you're ready, grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax and enjoy. Now the requirements for raids are on screen. Now I am aware that some French chats want you to have higher tier armor and that's because they want to be more fail safe as a team. In reality you don't really need much armor for raids, the only person that really needs armor is the base tank. And if you don't believe me, I've literally done raids with a bunch of friends including people who weren't experienced at raids and myself in pink skirts. So there's your proof. That being said, the requirements on screen are strongly recommended to anyone learning raids, even if you're getting carried by your clan and a bunch of high level players with maxed out gear, these are the things you'd want to have before doing raids. Here's a list of things that aren't per se necessary but enhance your ability to do damage or help you throughout the raid. The more things you have on this list the better, be sure to bring them along and use them. Now if you can form a team quickly and get raids done, it's really good money for the effort involved as you get 1 mil plus per loot. Unless you're very unlucky I assume. It's just very good money for the amount of effort involved and it's good fun too. One thing I must note, if you get the Gooby Burial Charms from the loot, you want to bury these in the Mazcab Graveyard to get reputation at Mazcab. This can have various benefits like discounts on the shop and more banks and Gooby Pets and all that stuff. Beastmaster Durazak is level 2000 combat and has 1.5 million life points and 3 pets, which I'll be covering in the full kill guide. He's immune to stuns and immune to poison, but the pets are not. It has three phases which I'll be covering again phase by phase in the full kill guide. If you've never been there before, the fastest way to get there is by going to the Lombard's Lodestone and teleporting by using the wizard to get to Tusker's back. This is the fastest way to get to Tusker's back. Then enter through the portal and you'll be there and there is actually a bank at Mazcap so you don't need to worry about getting your gear beforehand. If you already have one kill count, you can simply attune your boss portal in the PVM hub and teleport there. You can loot from raids every two days, but if you wait four days before raiding, you can actually do a double raid, meaning you can loot Beastmaster Durzag and Jakamaru twice. If you want the lock to auto reset, you can set it to that by talking to the NPC. Now both from Beastmaster Durzag and from Yakamaru, you have a chance to get Acto armor pieces, which is T90 tank armor and Maz capability codexes. If you do not get either of these drops, because they're rare, you will receive Techie, which you can use in the reward shop, for rerolls and other things. You can increase your chances of getting the Acto armor pieces by buying the regular tank armor versions from the Armorsmith shop. Here are all 6 rules for Beastmaster Durzag. I will be covering them in this order. DPS is the role everybody else has that doesn't have a true role, being Pet Tank 1 and 3, Pet Tank 2, North Chargers, Base Tank or Backup Tank. As for your gear setup, you want to be using either Ranged or Magic at Beastmaster Durzag. As for the Ranged setup, I did include Mechanized Gin Chompers, which you won't really use if you're DPS or Base Tank, but you will be using those if you're North Charger or Backup Base Tank if you are using range to kill off the Chargers. If you're using Magic you can just use Corruption Blast. Now these two setups aren't the definitive two best setups or what you need, they're just what I personally use and what I bring along. But generally speaking you just want your best DPS armor and weapons, your switches and a shield in case you need to back up base or take another roll out of nowhere because people die. Let's get started. Once the actual team leader enters the barrier, your entire team can join the raid. Simply go through the barrier and hop down into the arena. Just before starting, make sure you're overloaded and your aura is activated. Now at the start of the kill, you always want to be praying ranged as there's going to be a bunch of aerids and chargers. Unless there's only a charger on you, you can also pray melee, but the majority of the time you want to be praying ranged or deflect missiles if you're using curses. There's going to be a bunch of rounds and you simply want to kill the aerids and chargers. At around 21 kill count left, which you can see in the top corner of your screen, the first pet called Cormus will spawn. In this wave you do not want to kill the chargers and aerids, you want to focus on the first pet and the pet tag actually evokes this one. 
you want to kill off the pets and then kill off all the errors and chargers and keep on going with the waves. At around 3 to 4 kill count left, the players with a roll want to get into their positions and the DPS pile needs to get ready as now Beastmaster Durzag and its two pets will actually spawn. Now while the pet tank's actually evoking the pet and tanking it and luring it to a corner so you can use flanking and such, you want to do as much damage against these pets as possible. However, you do not want to kill the pets because this will enrage Beastmaster Durzag. You want to bring them down to 150,000 life points and then actually hop over to Beastmaster Durzag and start attacking him. You want to bring Beastmaster Durzag down to 750,000 life points as DPS and then start focusing on killing the pets and then hopping back onto Beastmaster Durzag. Now you can see these bombs that actually spawn and you want to defuse these as DPS as fast as you can because they can actually end up KOing your team. What you can do is quickly switch to the Magic Prayer to reduce the damage and maybe even use a Resonance or Devotion here and there. But simply just spam click on the floor and your team or DPS pile should be fine. And be sure to keep your distance from Beastmaster Durzag. And there you go, that's your kill. Now if you want to do Yakamaru after this kill, you're going to have to do a puzzle which I'll cover later on in the video. Now if you're pet tank 1 and 3, what you want to do is evoke the first pet as soon as it spawns and cycle through your defensive abilities until it's dead. The first pet actually dies pretty quickly and it doesn't really do as much damage as the other pets. The first pet called Cormus actually attacks with both ranged and magic, but you do want to pray ranged when it's attacking. Now the second pet spawns exactly at the same time with Beastmaster. However, this pet is for the pet tank 2 roll and you want to evoke the pet and lure it towards one of the corners. Not long after Beastmaster and the second pet have spawned, the third pet will spawn. This is actually random and it can be either Tuz or Krar, but the thing you need to remember is Tuz attacks with magic or melee attacks and Krar attacks with ranged or melee attacks. So if you're pet tanking Tuz, you do want to play magic and not ranged and then cycle through your defensive abilities. Ideally, you want to place the pets in opposite corners of each other and make sure they don't barge towards other players. You want to keep them in the corner to keep the damage against other players minimal and sometimes they do actually get off of you so you have to evoke them back to you. They can you know, surge around the arena depending on what's going on. So watch out for that. Keep them on you. Cycle through defensives. Resonance, debilitate, reflect, etc. And at 150k life points, the DPS pole must go back on Beastmaster Durzag but Pet Tank 2 and Pet Tank 1 and 3 must stay at the corner tanking the pets while not actually ending up killing them. After Beastmaster has reached 750,000 life points, the pets can be killed off and you turn into a DPS role and you should finish off Beastmaster Durzag. Now, as North Charger, what you want to do at around 4 kill count is get into position in the location you can see in the video and get ready to open up all the cages alongside the north side. The backup base does the exact same thing except he takes the south cages. When opening up the cages, be sure you pray melee because the chargers do attack with melee hits. Open up all the cages and if you're too slow and they all open up, make sure all the chargers are aggressive towards you and are following you by attacking them and using your abilities like chain and such to get them aggressive. Then just finish them off using your AoE abilities together with the backup base. Then after you've killed off all the chargers, that's it, that's all you have to do for the roll and you can get back to being a DPS roll. As a backup base, you do the exact same thing as DPS until around 3 to 4 kill count, and then you want to start opening up the southern cages. Again, while opening up the cages, be sure to pray melee and do this as quickly as possible and walk slightly zigzaggy around the edges so that no charges get stuck. Lure them to the southwest corner and finish them off together with the north charger roll. Then after you've killed the chargers, you want to get into your position as a backup base, standing in this exact location I'm standing in, and you want to wait with the voking until Beastmaster reaches 750,000 life points. You do this so that the base tank can recharge his defensive abilities and lose his stacks. Now while being back at base you also get stacks and you want to use freedom as often as possible to have these stacks because it will decrease the amount of damage Beastmaster Durzag does against you. This will all make more sense once I talk about the base tank role. Also, the backup base is usually referred to as backup tank. 
Now, as for the base tank, this is by far the most complex role at Beastmaster Durzag. As soon as Beastmaster actually ends up spawning, you want to evoke him and keep it on you at all times. Now, I do this a little too fast, but you want to bring him to the southeast corner and keep him there for the remainder of the fight after the backup base has taken away all the charges there because you do not want Beastmaster and the charges on you at the same time. Now before 750,000 life points you can cycle through your defensives like I am or if you're feeling confident enough just deal damage against Beastmaster Durzak. Now our pet tank died here so that's why the pet is actually on me. You know raids don't always go as planned, it is what it is, but that's why I equip my shield. Now when you're base tank you want to keep an eye on your stacks at all times as these increase the damage you take from Beastmaster Durzak. After 750,000 life points, if you have too many stacks, you're going to have a problem as you take a lot of damage. But you can halve the stacks by using the freedom ability, so you want to use this ability as often as you can to keep the stacks as low as possible. Now at 5 and 10 stacks, Beastmaster will actually cancel out your defensive abilities, so if you are using something like Barricade to negate the damage, it will get cancelled out and put on cooldown automatically. Just a thing you need to keep in mind. So ideally what you want to do is use freedom and then use barricade to have the most amount of uptime on the ability. Now at 750,000 life points the backup base will actually evoke Beastmaster off you. And that is so that you can reset your stacks and defensive abilities and like basically have a little break. And you want to evoke it back as soon as he has cycled through his abilities. And then just keep doing that back and forth if necessary if you get too many stacks and you're not able to hold your own against Beastmaster. This is especially important if you have slower and longer kills because you will have more stacks in total than a very fast kill. And personally what I found the most important to watch out for while doing Beastmaster base tanking is the bombs. They can actually spawn under you and end up killing you with their magic damage. So be sure to defuse them as soon as you can so that you do not end up getting KO'd. And that's all of the rules covered. Now let's get on to the little puzzle if you're interested in doing Yakamaru after killing Beastmaster. So if you re-enter the entrance after killing Beastmaster Durzak you have to do this little jelly wave thing and a puzzle to get access to Yakamaru. All you need to know is the white jellyfish actually reflect damage. So what you need to do is constantly stun the jellyfish until the jellyfish around the white jellyfish are killed because each killed jellyfish minion, so to say, will deal 10,000 damage against the reflecting jellyfish. After clearing all the jellyfish, four players must stand on the faces little thingies around the area and one player must hit the block near the southern bank. This will reveal a certain type of face emotion and the other four players standing on those pads must stand on the same pad as the one you saw and then the canal will be unblocked and you will have access to Yakamaru. Anyways, with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this guide and found it helpful. If you did, please leave a like down below and maybe even consider subscribing. And hopefully in the future, I'll also have a Yakamari guide. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.